Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this little guy right here. This is a Swayback Jack slip joint from uh, a guy named Rainy Day Knives. Um, so there we go. First off, though, I want to thank very much my Patreon patrons, actually, for uh, making it possible not only for the channel to be a thing, but for me to see something random on a show table and say, you know what, this probably isn't for my permanent collection, but by God, I want to pick this guy up and show people. You know, it's just like, yeah, okay, th their support makes it possible for me to just grab a $550 slip joint off a table just to show the world. Um, that's That means the world to me, and I, I really do appreciate it. I also want to thank my buddy Russell, who shipped this actually home from the USN for me. I, I, I ended up flying with just a carry-on, which is kind of a dumb thing to do going to a knife show, but, the, you know, I just lost some baggage the week before. I was skittish, guys. Um, and so he was able to ship this guy back for me because he had drug, uh, driven. That's a beautiful thing. Next thing, let's do a size comparison. This is not a big knife at all. Um, here it is against the, um, the Spydeco Delica, Spydeco PM2. And so you can see here, this guy is freaking tiny. And here it is against the Ontario Rat number two. This is a very small knife. In fact, I'll do a quick measurement for you, just so you can get a sense of how very small this is. Uh, where is my ruler? Here's my ruler. Come here, ruler. Yeah, we're looking at under two and a half inches for this guy, so that's going to make it legal in a bunch of places. Next thing, this is a custom knife, through and through. Um, they, they, He has made none other like this. This is a custom knife, and custom knife reviewing is really hard, not only because, you know, these are individual artists, and they're going to have, you know, variants as opposed to production, which will also have variants, but hopefully, you know, a little less. Anyways, um, uh, that sounded really wrong. I don't mean to imply that custom the knife makers are going to have a lot more variability, but each knife is going to be different for them, as opposed to when production knives are being shot out one after the other, we expect a little bit more consistency just me mechanism-wise and everything. So custom knives are a little hard. They're also pretty expensive, and the biggest downside is that you can't buy this knife. As a matter of fact, this knife is already sold. Um, a buddy of mine reached out to me literally the day of the show, and, you know, good friend, and so I wanted to, you know, get this guy his way. Um, and so uh, this guy is already going to be sold. Um, but it's, you know... Uh, I'm not going to do a full review because, well, it's a custom knife, and that's a little weird anyways, but I do want to talk about this guy and highlight some of the joy that I found in this little one. Then finally, what the heck's a rainy day knives? Well, you can see right here, there's a uh, the, the, there's the rain, or, uh, rainbow, that's not it, the umbrella um, uh, little emblem there. That's, that's the rainy day knives emblem. This is literally a dude named Jim, lives in South Carolina. He's been doing this for five years, but the USN in Vegas here in 2019 was his very, very first show. And I, you know, I'm just wandering around the place and I walk up to his table and I see a grind. I see one of his knives has this really super thin edge. It's just like, okay, you have my attention. Tell me about your wares. And I looked at it and the, the, the entire table was just like straight freaking fire. It was amazing. He did really, really good work, and so I ended up picking this guy up, and I could have picked up some of the other stuff there, and it was good. that that was also awesome. But I had a very strong feeling of like, where the heck did this guy come from? This is amazing. And so, anyways, uh, that's that that's rainy day knives. Just a one guy in South Carolina who's been working on his craft quietly, and is now finally breaking into the show scene. So let's go on ahead and talk about what's good about this guy and what's not so good about this guy, and then I'll give a final conclusion. So the good side, um, this is actually pretty easy to open. It does have a nail nick in there, but you don't really need it. You can grab have this guy, pop it open. That's something I very much like with a slip joint, is somebody who keeps his nails relatively thin as a well-known internet hand model. Um, so that's a beautiful thing, a relatively small, that is. It also has very neat materials. What we can see here is that we, we the scales are made of what's called Fordite, or a uh, it's also called a Detroit agate. Um, it is basically, uh, imagine that you're in an automated, or an automotive spray booth. Um, you're going to be putting down a whole bunch of paint, and it's just going to accumulate in places over and over again in very thin little coats. Um, this is the result of that. You see, this was a yellow car getting sprayed, a silver car, a gray one, a white car, a black one, a white one, etc. Um, so they basically cut this and then they polish it out. And so as a result, you end up with this really cool sort of almost Damascus-y look um, out of automotive paint, which is pretty durable stuff. A lot of folks don't necessarily care for it. Honestly, I'm a little bit mixed. I, you know, I, I like this side, for instance, a lot more than I like this one because I'm not a big yellow sort of guy. But it is definitely cool. And I think that's a really nice thing. And he's coupled it with a very nice Damascus blade. Um, this is just a beautiful Damascus, um, 100%. I, I, it is not sole authorship. I'm trying to remember. I believe this is Vegas Forge. Um, but perhaps the, he can comment in the... Because the, the, it doesn't look like Devin Thomas... This could be Chad Nichols. Either way, it's a beautiful uh, Damascus blade and uh, or a, a pattern welded steel sort of thing. Um, and, and it is absolutely gorgeous. And he's used the material very, very well, which is nice. Um, speaking of this blade, look at the freaking grind on this. 
This is a super, super thin edge. This is an edge that comes down to an amazing apex. It's very, very, very thin. I like very much this edge. This is a knife that cuts like crazy. And given that it's relatively thin stock and a very, very thin edge with a great grind and a nice plunge and a good sharpening choil, Oh, man, like his grinds on that table. I walk up to that table and every damn grind was just like super thin. It was like straight freaking fire. This guy is grinding off the charts. I, I appreciated it very much. Next thing, this guy has a very, very good uh, walk and talk, so to speak. Um, For a slip joint person, that's the, that the strength of the back spring. This has, uh, on, honestly, what feels pretty perfect to me in that it is not super, uh, it's not super hard to get open, but it's also not super easy to have close. I like that very, very much. Next thing, price on this guy, pretty reasonable. We're looking at 550 bucks. Now, some of you are going, oh my God, 550 bucks, you bourgeois. But yeah, okay, sure. But this is one jackass in South Carolina sitting in his garage or wherever he's doing this, um, making knives on his own. There is a bunch of handwork that's gone into this piece, and it is a one-of-one -one custom handmade knife. I challenge you to do that in such a way that you can get paid less for, uh, that you can charge less for that. It's just a lot of hours into this guy. Um, in the custom world, the prices are higher, but they kind of need to be. And compared, honestly, to a bunch of the other slip joint makers there, um, both in terms of quality, and I'm not imputing all of them, there were definitely great slip joints there alongside these guys, but this was really, really competitive. This was A-OK -okay price-wise. I had absolutely no problem paying 550 bucks for this. In fact, I felt like it was a pretty damn good deal. And so, to me at least, all that is what was good, is that the price was really reasonable. It has great walk and talk and action here. Um, it's got an awesome grind with a great Damascus blade, neat materials, and a very nice, easy open design. On the bad side. There is no disassembly here. It's a slip joint. That's common, but that's one thing to consider. Um, there are also some very, very small gaps here. I'm going to see if I can maybe show this off to you using a flashlight here. If I go ahead and put this guy through, I'll see if you can see the flashlight. Yeah, right there. You can see a little tiny bit of gapping in on occasion. I'm really making it seem way worse than it should be, or way worse than it is. In practice, you cannot see those gaps, even if you're looking very closely. I mean, yeah, it ain't there. However, at the same time, they are there, and so if I'm super nitpicking, um, there, there are some tiny gaps there. I'd also like to maybe see a little bit of crowning on the spine. The spine of this guy is relatively sharp. And it's not like you're hitting this guy with a you're hitting a fire steel with this. So I think that's maybe something to consider. Um, there's also a little tiny bit. If we look at the shield very closely, you can see that there's a little tiny bit of gap right there. Feels like there's some kind of a black epoxy or something like that. That is maybe the biggest flaw on this guy um, in terms of its its fit and finish. But look, that's going to be a hard thing to do. And in practice, when it's set down on a table, you really don't notice it. But that's maybe the biggest issue there. And then finally, there is a bit of a recurve on this blade. Um, it's supposed to be a one cliff blade. Maybe he's going for that. I don't know. But if we hold this guy up to this ruler, what we can see here is that there is, in fact, a little tiny bit of recurving. Um, this is not a big deal in any particular sense. However, what it does mean is that you have a, uh, if you're putting this guy in a flat stone, it's going to take a little while for that flat stone to wear down the tip enough so you can do the whole thing. Um, so, you know, that, that little tiny bit of recurve could be an issue. But again, that could also be a design choice. But it, it comes across as a non-committal recurve, which is not something I love Particularly. But to me, at least, that's what's bad here is there's a slight recurve to the blade. There is a little bit of gapping around the outside of this guy, although, again, it's not a big deal. Um, there's a bit of crown. I could use a little crowning on the spine. There are tiny, tiny nitpicky gaps back here, but again, you can't really see them unless you're looking with a light source behind the knife. And there is no disassembly, but it's a slip joint, so I should shut my mouth. Um, probably not, but it's just a, that's the way things are. Um, final conclusion this guy. This guy has my attention, rainy day knives, that is. Um, this is, because this is a great knife. This is even a gem. Um, I knew when I bought it, it wasn't forever. I knew that this particular knife, although it's gorgeous, and I definitely held, you know, I kept it around. I carried it a fair bit. But this guy was not something where it was like, yeah, this is, a, you know, a permanent thing. Just the style-wise, it wasn't exactly what I was after. However... It is really, 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 really good. This shows a level of mastery that I didn't expect. And I don't mean to say, by the way, that this guy, that Rainy Day, you know, should be way worse than he is or anything like that. It's just like, I, I've become a little bit jaded, right? 
After a while, I feel like I've been in this game long enough that I, I know a lot of the really good custom makers who should be, those should be the ones where I walk up to the table is just like, damn. But this guy kind of came out of nowhere. Um, usually makers who are this good are really well known in the community. And given I'm not as into the custom scene, maybe this guy's had a big name for a while now. But holy crap, I walk up to this guy's table. It was just like, whoa. Um, and this honestly is part of the reason I go to shows. So I can walk up to some random guy at his first show and say, you know, hey, Whoa, this is amazing. And that's what brings me more joy than anything, spotting a maker that not a lot of folks know about and bringing their work to a wider audience. Um, because every damn knife on his table had a very nice action, a very nice grind, and a neat approach to the world. None of his stuff was particularly high-speed, low-drag. It wasn't super serious. They were just good tools from fun materials that were made with a level of mastery that is really up there, but priced with a level of humility and reality that's a little bit uncommon at these shows sometimes. Unfortunately, if history's any indication, this guy is about to have have a little bit more trouble keeping knives on his website for any length of time after this video. Maybe as a result, this is more of an advisory than anything. Rainy Day Knives is a guy to keep an eye on. If you see him at a show, you know what? Take a closer look. If you see his table, walk over there because there's probably going to be great stuff on it. Um, And, you know, maybe throw him a follow on Instagram, uh, you know, because he's doing really cool work. But this is a guy who is 100% doing it right. He worked on his craft in relative quiet for a bunch of years. He got everything absolutely solid. And then he shows up to a show with amazing work and priced at a level where it feels super competitive. That is exactly what I want to see, and this is just a, a breath of freaking fresh air. So, rainy day knives, really seriously good work. This is a great knife, this is a gem, and this is something that absolutely will bring, you know, the next owner joy, and just as I know a lot of his knives have brought other owners joy in the uh, past, because I've been asking around, right? So anyways, um, well done, Rainy Day, and uh, you, you keep this guy in your radar. He's doing great work, and uh, yeah, he's definitely on mine. Hope this has been interesting to you, and have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.